Hello, so today we're going to be using the BBC Microbit to connect to Minecraft. Let's have a look at the BBC Microbit. It has a display of 25 LEDs, two buttons that we can press, some pins where you can connect external electronic components, and on the back we have an accelerometer and a compass, and we'll be using the accelerometer to sense tilt in this adventure. So I've written a package called BitIO that allows you to use your BBC Microbit with um, Minecraft. And the first thing to do is to plug your USB cable in. You will see that when you do that, the light on the back will light up so you know your microbit is connected. Inside your My Adventures folder will be a bitio.hex file. So drag that, drop it onto the microbit, and the light on the back of the microbit will flash to let you know that the program is downloading. When that stops flashing, the drive microbit will eject, and then you will see on the screen a bitio logo. And that's it, we're ready to start using bitio. So the, the next thing is to um, load up the button.py program that you would have written inside Adventure 8 and run this. And when it imports the microbit module, it will start searching for your microbit. So let's run this module. And the first thing it says is, haven't found any devices. So remove the device, so we unplug the USB cable, press enter. And the program scans for devices on your computer and then asks you to plug your device back in again. Press enter again. And it will find the newly connected device. Press Y and enter to remember that. And the program is now running. So this little program, when you press the button A, it shows button A pressed on the screen. And that's it. You're ready to do the other adventures in this chapter. Hello. And we're going to be using your BBC Microbit to play a ball rolling game inside Minecraft. And let's first play the game and see how it works. So let's run this program. Go over into Minecraft. And it says press B to start. So you need to press the B button on the BBC Microbit. And you get a countdown. And then the game will start. It builds a table. And let's get a little bit higher up so we can see what's going on, see the whole table. That cactus is the ball, so as I tilt the micro bit from left to right, you'll see the ball moves left to right, and as I move forwards and backwards, the ball moves forwards and backwards. And the object of the game is to collect all of those gold objects. And you have to get on top of the object for it to be collected. We're tilting very, very carefully. Let's try another one over here. And you'll see as you collect objects, the display will update on the screen to say how many objects are left to connect. I wonder if I can get this before sundown. And if you fall into a hole, you press the B button and then the ball will appear at a random location on the screen. Okay, so this is the Adventure 8 ball game code. Let's just have a little look through this code and see if we can work out how it works. Now this code is split up into various functions because in the adventure you'll build it up piece by piece and that's the best way to build up a large program. But this is where everything starts, this while true loop down here. Um, when you run the program for the first time it will first wait for the start button to be pressed. It will build a game and then play the game. So the wait for start is all about waiting for the button B to be pressed on the BBC microbit. So it sits in a little loop here saying while well, the button B was not pressed, just wait for a little bit. It will loop around there and then as soon as you press the button B, it will count down 54321 on the display and then the game will start. The next thing to do is to build the game. So there's a function called build game which builds everything. It will get the player position because it will build the table where the player is. Build the table, move the ball into a random position, place all the treasure, it will move your player to a reasonable viewing point and then set the remaining items that you need to collect to treasure count which is a constant right at the top of your program here. And then finally it will play the game and the, this is the game loop so it will keep looping around this game loop while there's more objects remaining. It will check the tilt on the micro bit, so we'll look at that in a moment. It will check to see how far you're tilting it. It will move the ball based on that tilt and then it will check below the player to see what objects are on, whether anything needs to be moved. If you look at the checked tilt, 
the check tilt basically reads the micro bit accelerometer in the x and the y dimensions. And remember that the micro bit uses x and y, and in Minecraft that translates to x and z because of the way coordinates work in Minecraft. Um, then when your remaining um, items change, there is a piece of code here check below where the block below is a treasure block. It will set that to air, take one off the number of remaining items and display that on the micro bit. So eventually as you tilt around and collect all of these objects, the remaining variable will go down to zero and then the game will stop. And finally it will have in remembered the time you started the game and the time you ended the game which will show you how long the, the game took to play. Hello, so let's finish off by actually playing the game. We have our BBC mic bit ready. The code is running and Minecraft is running. Let's go back to the game. And we press the B button to start the game. We get a countdown. So what the code has done is it's built the table. So it's done loads of set block commands to build the table and then it's done a uh, draw ball. It's now waiting for the tilt, so it's calling the check tilt function and as I tilt the micro bit in the X and the Y dimensions it will move the ball on the screen. Uh, it's going through that loop and it's checking um, what's below it by calling the check below function and then whenever it sees below that there's a gold block it will take one off of the remaining variable and it will update the display with a different remaining variable. It will keep looping around that loop while you're tilting the micro bit and it will keep running until the remaining variable is zero. If you fall down a hole remember that you have to press the B button to get out and that's like a time penalty so it makes the game a little harder to play. Don't forget that you can change the constants at the top of the program so right at the top of the program listing you can change some of these constants here to put more or less items of treasure or change the table size or even change the block type for the ball and the treasure block which can make it um, more exciting to play if you've got more or less items.